Ella, King Saul and his army gather for battle against the Philistine army. However, neither army is aware of two shepherd boys on a nearby hillside who will become Israel's guardian warriors. In a pit carved out of the floor of the cave, they came upon Abishai's sister. She was pushing and pulling at a large rock that had rolled onto her foot. Not far from her was a large and menacing lion. Abishai, help! I'm stuck! Abishai, go to her and help her get free. But the lion! I will keep the lion busy. Now go! just saved your life. You need to stop being so reckless. Now go straight home, Ariella. Mother is worried sick about you. I can't believe you killed that lion, Ben. I thought we were all dead. My Uncle David killed a lion once. And a bear. The next day. And that's why arranging themselves on the slopes of Wadi El Gindi is best. The Philistines must cross not one, not two, but three streams before even attempting the ascent up the slope. Hey, that's my Uncle David! David! Where are you headed, Uncle? I'm bringing food to my brothers serving in King Saul's army. Here, you two can help me carry it to them. It's not much further. Today I defy Israel and your God. Send out the man and let us fight. Why does Saul allow that man to blaspheme God? Is your uncle really going to ask King Saul to accept the giant's challenge? My men are saying that you want to fight the Philistine giant. Yes. <laughs> Here, take my armor. You will need it. I do not need your armor. God will protect me. David picked up five smooth stones on his way to meet the giant Goliath. King Saul and the Israelite army had assembled in the Valley of Elah. They pitched camp near Ephes de Mim, between Sukkot and Azekah. The Philistines occupied one hill and the Israelites another, with the valley between them. Among the enemy soldiers, none was more terrifying than the champion from Gath, a giant Philistine named Goliath. He stood over nine feet tall and wore a bronze helmet on his head and wore a coat of scale armor of bronze. On his legs, he wore bronze greaves, and a bronze javelin was slung on his back. His spear shaft was like a weaver's rod, 
and its iron point weighed 15 pounds alone, his shield bearer went ahead of him. In King Saul's camp, Abishai and Benaiah found David exiting the king's tent. David! You're not going to fight that Philistine, are you? I am. The Lord is with me and I will win. David, wait! Come against me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. <laughs> I ask for a man, and you send me a boy. Am I a dog that you come at me with a puny stick? Come here and meet your fate, little Israelite. I will give the carcasses of the Philistine army to the birds and wild animals, and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. David takes Goliath's own sword to deliver the killing blow. The Philistines ran when they saw that their champion was defeated. The men of Israel and Judah surged forward with a shout and pursued the Philistines all the way to the entrance of Gath. That was amazing! You... you did it! I can't believe you won! The Lord delivered Israel a great victory today. I need you to go out into the Philistine camps and gather up all of the iron weapons and armor that you can. Keep what you find somewhere safe. I know a cave that'll make a good hiding spot. Many years have passed since David killed Goliath. David has become a fine military commander of King Saul. Abishai and Benaiah are now mighty warriors serving under David. They are becoming his trusted advisors. Abishai's younger brother, Joab, is a brilliant strategist that David often relies on for critical military planning. David commands a thousand men and his exploits have earned him acclaim throughout Israel. 
King Saul has long battled the Philistines, and the people sing his praises. But he has been in a foul mood lately, since the people have begun shouting for... David! David is coming! Saul has slain his thousands, and David his tens of thousands! David will crush the Philistines! Is that David? He's so handsome! Do you hear that, Ishbosheth? Father, why do you let the people cheer for David? He is not the king. Why don't you get rid of him? I've told you before, my son. I can't get rid of him. Why not? You were anointed by God. You're the king. You can do whatever you want. Yes, I am the king. I can do what I want. I am the king. danger, David sent his parents to safety under the protection of the king of Moab. David's ancestor, Ruth, was from Moab. This is the last we hear of David's parents. David chose the cave of Adullam as his headquarters for himself and his growing number of men. He also brought his family here, fearing that Saul might make an attempt on their lives. Even though this is a time of peace, David's men train relentlessly. They know Saul and his soldiers are constantly hunting to find and kill David. The refugees lived off the land. They hunted deer fished in the scarce streams, and gathered eggs from the occasional bird's nest. They lived in peace, but it was a short-lived peace. David spoke with an emissary from the foreign nation of Moab. He secured passage for his family to travel to Moab, where they could live under the protection of the Moabite king, Mesa. The old shepherd brings troubling news to the cave of Odua. The Philistines are marching on Kila. They will be there in a matter of days. The city is defenseless. Where is Saul and his army? He is supposed to protect his people. Saul is in his palace in Gibeah. It would take him at least a fortnight to respond. And I doubt Saul cares enough to come even then. David inquired of the Lord if he should go to Kila and fight the Philistines. The Lord answered, Yes. Go attack the Philistines. Save Kila. Gather the men. We march to Kila immediately. Finally, we can put all of this training to use. The men, women, and children of Kila need our protection. They will be slaughtered and enslaved. Saul will not protect them. He's too busy obsessing over me. We will defend our Israelite brothers. I inquired of the Lord. And he says victory is already ours. Joab, what are your thoughts on defending this city?
towers are secure. We should speak with Joab. How goes the battle outside? We have a problem on our hands, Abishai. Someone has set fire to the keep. It must be extinguished. Who's your new friend? This is Shama, son of Aggie. Shama, this is my brother Joab. He is a fine commander. Greetings, Joab. The battle fares well for David. It is almost over. The fire, however, was just started. Douse the fire and find those responsible. Of course. Commander. Described as one of the three, a special contingent of David's mighty warriors. Understand. Oh, this is unfortunate. I will inform him. You're in your debt. We can house our men in the storehouse. It could easily be converted into a barracks. Glad you've agreed to stay here. 
Men are sick of that cave, and with a little polish, the city will be quite defensible. Saul has learned of our presence here and is on his way. We must get to work preparing the city's defenses immediately. David prayed, Lord, God of Israel, I have heard that Saul is coming to Keilah. I fear he will destroy the town because of me. Will he come? Will the people of Keilah give me over to Saul? Lord God of Israel, I am your servant. Please protect my men and me. The Lord answered, Saul will come. David asked again, Will the people of Keilah give me and my men to Saul? The Lord answered, They will. So David and his men left Keilah. Later, Saul learned that they had escaped from the city, so he ordered his army home. Any news of the Philistines? Last I heard, Saul was fighting them in Azekah. Again. And they still have Bethlehem under siege. Ah, Bethlehem. How I miss that place. This is a quiet place. How long have you been here? Close to a year now, I think. Eleazar? A little over a year. David has 600 men now. I am pleased to be one of them. Saul does not seem to be dealing with the Philistines, so I am glad David is. I am pleased also that you decided to come with us, Shama. I was getting tired of only looking at this behemoth's ugly mug. <laughs> he has such a sweet face. What's not to love about it? Give anything for a drink of water from the well of Bethlehem. I would like to do something for him, for saving my city of Keilah. I am also in David's debt. What do you have in mind, Shama? Have you ever been to Bethlehem? It's lovely this time of night. <laughs> 